So on this slide, I'm going to show you how to prove that a function is even, even if you don't have the graph in front of you. You're just given an f of x situation. Well, the rule is a function f of x is even if f of negative x equals f of x. That is to say, if you take your original function and you substitute negative x in for every occurrence of x, and you end up getting back to the original, then you have an even function. So when you plug in this negative x, you end up getting back what you started with, then it's going to be even. So let's take a look. I've given two examples. Number 9 says f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 1. I don't know what the graph of this looks like. I don't have a graphing calculator, but I'm going to assess its symmetry right now by doing this test for odd even, particularly for even. So I'm going to start by evaluating f of negative x. And what this means is wherever I see an x, I'm going to substitute in its place negative x. Now, negative x to the fourth is like negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x. And a negative 1, this number in front is really negative 1. Negative 1 to the fourth power is just positive 1. And then x raised to the power 4 is x to the fourth. So this turns into 3x to the fourth. And then we have minus 5. And then negative x squared would be negative x times negative x, which is x squared. And then plus 1 it just gets rewritten like this, plus 1. And what I notice is that what I just wrote down is exactly the same as the original. And because th these guys here are the same, that means the function is even. And because the function is even, it's going to have y-axis symmetry. And I know that even though I've not looked at any graph yet. Let's take a look at example 10. g of x is equal to x squared plus 1 all over the absolute value of x. Now certainly this is not a graph that I've ever looked at. This is very strange. So I want to know if it has uh, y-axis symmetry. So let's use this test for evenness to see if it's going to be an even function. And I'm going to start by replacing every occurrence of x with negative x. Okay, so I've essentially replaced every occurrence of x with negative x. And now I'm going to uh, evaluate each of these expressions right now, starting with the top left. Well, negative x squared is negative x times negative x, or x squared. The plus 1 I'm just going to rewrite. And the absolute value of negative x is just going to be uh, x, which I can write as the absolute value of x. So what we notice here is that what I have is exactly the same as the original function. This is the same as this. And because they're the same, I know that g of x is even, and that my graph, when if I were to, to actually graph it either by hand or with the graphing calculator, would exhibit y-axis symmetry. So the test for, for a function to be even is pretty easy. Just replace every occurrence of x with negative x and see that what you end up with is the same as what you started with. So now we're on the last slide, and I'm going to show you how to prove that a function is odd even without looking at its graph. And the rule is a function f of x is odd if f of negative x equals the opposite of f of x. And what that means is if I replace every occurrence of x with negative x and I end up getting the opposite of what I started with, then it's odd. Now the reason I keep saying this word opposite is because there's a negative preceding the f of x. So the original function is just f of x, and my result is the opposite of f of x. So if what I end up getting is the opposite of what I started with, then I know that it's odd. So let's take a look at number 11. They give us a polynomial function. h of x is equal to negative 4x cubed minus 2x. And I'm going to start by replacing every occurrence of x with negative x. Now let's start right here at this negative x cubed. Negative x cubed would be negative x times negative x times negative x. And th you can think of this negative as a negative 1. And negative 1 cubed itself is just negative 1. So this ends up being negative x cubed times the 4 in front gives us negative 4x cubed. And then negative 2 times negative x is just going to be plus 2x. 
Now, if I factor out a negative, I end up getting 4x cubed minus 2x. And what I just wrote down is exactly the opposite of what I started with. So I started with 4x cubed minus 2x, and now I end up with the opposite of 4x cubed minus 2x. And since these two things are opposite, which begins with an O, by the way, then I know the function must be odd, which means it's going to have origin symmetry. And finally, f of x is equal to 2 over x to the fifth plus x. I've never seen this graph before. Let's assess its symmetry. Let's start by replacing every occurrence of x with negative x. Well, the numerator is easy enough. The numerator just is going to stay 2. Now, I'd like you to think for a moment what negative x to the fifth is. And in the end, if you expand that, you get negative x to the fifth. And then plus a negative x is really minus x. Now I'm going to factor a negative out of the bottom, leaving me with x to the fifth plus x. And I can stop here because I, I notice that what I just wrote down is exactly the opposite of what I started with. I started with 2 over x to the fifth plus x, and I just ended with 2 over the opposite of x to the fifth plus x. So these two fractions, these two rational expressions are opposite, which means we can classify the function as being odd, which means that it'll exhibit origin symmetry. So to figure out if a function is odd or not, you simply replace every occurrence of x with negative x and check to see that it ends up being the opposite of what you started with.